canyon scenes and staff comments. Yes, this is my office, which is still hard to say and comprehend that this is my office, which is a wonderful opportunity, and I think it's great to be able to get out as much as I want. I do have to kick myself every once in a while and, and, and be reminded that this is a job. It's a great place to be, that, uh, and it's a place that I love very much. Video shows action in parks. Graphics read outside science, inside parks. Speaker is Cassidy Esposito. Did you know that biodiversity has a sound and that you can use those sounds to plan for prescribed fires? I'm Cassidy Esposito and welcome to Outside Science Inside Parks. This time we catch up with scientists who are doing just that at the Grand Canyon. Let's check it out. Graphics read Grand Canyon National Park. Outside Science Inside Parks. NPS logo. Speaker is Madison Chudzik scientists and park intern. Who wouldn't want to live and work in the Grand Canyon? I mean, I wake up every day and my walk to work is through these magnificent woods and I'm a two minute walk to the rim of the canyon. So anytime I wake up or want to see a beautiful sunset or sunrise, I can just walk over and be on the canyon and looking at this magnificent view anytime I want. Speaker is Mike Kersley, Grand Canyon Wilderness Coordinator. There's no place like this in the world. There's absolutely no place like this anywhere else. Um, so it's important that we keep it for people to see down the road 100 years, 200 years. It needs to still be here and it needs to still offer the same experience that people are having now. Driving into forest. So what we were driving to earlier was the prescribed burn site here in Grand Canyon. It's one of the few sites that we have here that we regularly prescribe burn. And what we have set up there is a acoustic monitoring station so that it is set from dawn to dusk. And it's to record the natural sounds that occur overnight and into the morning. Prescribed burn in forest. The fire program was interested in what effects a fire would have on the diversity of the area. And so we are hoping to show that there's at least not a long-term detrimental effect really a lot of that biodiversity that we're measuring, the best way to measure that is with birds. They are a great indicator. Um, so the more amount of songs that we're hearing, the more diverse it is, the more healthier we believe that ecosystem probably is. So then with these measurements, we're really just seeing how biodiverse and the biodiversity of the area of these two sites and how they could differ with the effects of uh, fire ecology coming through. So if we are still seeing these birds return, and all these other mammals coming back after these post-fire, um, it might be a great indicator that, yeah, the, the landscape does need fire and it should go returning back to its natural fire regime. Madison at table with sound recorder. This is our Wildlife Acoustics um, SM4 mini recorder. And so this is one of the microphones on this end and then normally there'd be a microphone on the other end so that option to do mono or um, stereo audio. And with this unit, we're able to just throw it up, wrap a strap around it, and let them be there for as long as they need to be for recording. Visitors at Canyon Rim. And it's also important just because the acoustics are an important part of your experience when you're at the canyon or places like it. Most people don't think about soundscapes. Most people don't think about the acoustic part until you point it out to them and then it suddenly becomes everywhere and, and, and they're, they realize just how important it is. Madison on Rim Overlook. Those are things to me that it's almost meditative for me when I'm walking around the woods or out here and I'm hearing the birds chirping, I'm noticing all these natural sounds and I'm kind of keeping track of it. It's, it, it centers me. And so being able to share that with other people and conserve it for other people and visitors to come here and I wish I could like walk them along a path here and be like point out every small natural sound so they can tune their ear to that. Because it really is training your ear for it. Like everybody should be able to hear that and be able to experience it. Thanks for watching this episode of Outside Science, Inside Parks. We'll see you next time. Graphics read. Outside Science, Inside Parks is a production of NPS Natural Resource Stewardship and Science in association with Colorado State University.